ٹرائل of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam had was uh, I mean, had already taken place and then uh, rest of the matters pertaining to the trials will again come up when his third trial will take place so here i am not going into the details of the second trial i am leaving it here and we will recapitulate we had already finished the discussion but i will recapitulate it along with the discussion on ayat numbers 50 and 51 when we discuss ayat 50 and 51 these ayat pertain to the third trial of uh, for third court trial at the supreme court level of yusuf alayhi salam and then there we will discuss and recapitulate the ayat which we already discussed pertaining to his first trial and the second trial so today i am not recapitulating and not going back to those we proceed further uh today we are starting with ayat number 37 last time we you recall that when yusuf alayhi salam had been given the life imprisonment and he was uh, confined in the solitary confinement in the prison after that two more boy slaves our uh, servants slaves were admitted as inmates in the prison and at that time uh, in that background uh, though the discussion started between uh, among them uh, the two uh, new inmates they had mentioned about their dreams uh, one has said that uh, i have seen in my dream that i am pressing a uh, wine and then the other one had said that i have seen that uh, birds are eating bread from my head this was this is the crux of the matter and they had requested yusuf alayhi salam to give them the interpretation of these two dreams that they were so so they were worried about it <laughs> now yusuf alayhi salam is telling them look at the step wise approach of yusuf alayhi salam the way he is proceeding to discuss with them there is a lot of wisdom in these ayat he is telling them that uh, i will give you the interpretation before your food arises <laughs> arrives before your food arrives i'll give you the interpretation but whenever he is talking to them in these ayat you will see that he will, he is first of all creating a bond with them a union with them a union a bond of sympathy a empathy with them he is all the time addressing them as my inmates of the prison oh you my inmates of the prison he is not just time I mean, and start uh, starting to talk uh, in the air he is addressing them he is engaging them in the second person and then he is establishing the bond that he is all the time telling them that oh you my inmates of the prison this is the first step this is there is wisdom in quran this shows that how you should address even if you are addressing the strangers if they are not known to you try to find out a reason for bonding with them for having some association with them and and use the words where you can convey the empathy for them and then another approach which is very important that straight away he is not starting with what he wants to say he is first of all giving them the hope that you will receive your food your food will arrive and because they were hungry and it it's it shows that the time table is not uh, fixed 
and this also shows the condition of the prison that they were not allowed to come out of the confinement even for meals the food was to be served whatever it was the meal or whatever it was it was going to be served in the solitary confinement or in the confinement cell but now there were three before that yusuf was alone he was in solitary confinement and then two other inmates also now arrived they are three now and they are not allowed to come out of the cell even for their meals the food will be served within that now this is the situation when the uh, uh, condemned prisoners are put in a cell and this shows that all of these three were being treated as the condemned prisoners in the case of yusuf alaihi salam the sentence was not determined how many years how many days he will be in jail and whenever it is the international legal practice all around the world always when the term is not mentioned it means uh, one be in the will be in the confinement for life the yusuf was there, there uh, alaihi salam he was there for life and two other also they are also under trial now this is another aspect of the case that although these three persons are not yet convicted they are under trial the interpretation of the dream will tell us they are under trial and under trial prisoners without any concluding conviction they are placed in a confinement in which they are not allowed to come out for meals and the meals will be served to them behind the bars this is the situation through which yusuf alaihi salam was passing but, but for yusuf alaihi salam it was very important to learn from this the lesson that allah subhanahu wa taala was putting him on the job training that this is the situation of your uh, of the country of the of the territory of the area of the people and when you get power you have to address these issues he was practically being shown these difficult these difficulties through which he was being passed and then when he starts talking to them the second step he, ta- he takes is that he first of all gives them the assurance that your food will come so that they uh, uh, listen with hope and then he is telling them that i will give you the interpretation is not just you will be waiting for the food and this way you can pass your time very well well engaged and their attention diverted from the hunger that is from what my lord has taught to me he is not boasting he is not claiming that i am an expert in this he says that my lord has taught me uh, in this interpretation a new word will appear that i'll explain but at the beginning you should know that he had said that the tawil al ahadees the interpretation of the happenings here he is not although they are up, up, uh, asking for interpretation tawil just tawil but in the next ayat you will find that he is not only giving the interpretation as tawil but he is giving the interpretation as a legal interpretation also of their trial and the sentence which is going to be passed he is advising them as an attorney you can say he is going to give them a fatwa the word used in the word what the word which allah uh, yusuf alaihi salam will use is fatwa so here he is telling them that i am going to give you an interpretation a neutral term but then he will give them a legal interpretation when we come to that ayah that kindly keep in mind and he says it is from my lord indeed i have left the religion of a people here the words are very important to be noted that he says that i have left the millat of the qaum usually you have seen in urdu also in bengali in uh, Uh, Sindhi in so many other languages that we use words like millat, uh, qom, ummat, uh, 
uh, and we exchange these words without uh, differentiating the meaning. We use them interchangeably, but there's a difference. Word Millat has been used for Ibrahim as a single person, as one person. He is Millat. He is the model of the way of the Nusuf, of the ritual, of the uh, the way the uh, ritual has to be carried out, the way worship has to be uh, made, and all these things he established. He established the model. So here, Yusuf salam is telling them that I have left the ways or the path of the people gone who were not believing in Allah. He is first of all introducing himself that uh, I am so and so and I'm going to talk to you on the subject so that they are not in any doubt. He is giving them the subject matter, the topic of it and the background. He's telling them that I'm going to talk about the theology. I'm going to talk about monotheism. And this is the background that I'm not only talking uh, to you on the basis of only <coughs> theoretical, theological, uh, um, understanding that I'm talking to you from my practical experience that before this what I was and now what I am, what I have learned and what I've experienced I'm talking to you with full confidence on the basis of theory and also on the basis of my practical life. That is how I'm going to address these issues. And here there is one important point which he is making to them that those who don't believe in Allah are those who don't believe in the last day Akhirah <clears throat> if one believes in the Akhirah that there will be resurrection there will be the last day there will be accountability there will be judgment it means there is Allah he is going to do all these things so these two concepts go together and there are three ayat we had discussed some time back which, uh, in which the definition of Mu'minun is given. A question was raised, who is Mu'min? And two fundamental elements of the essential elements without which there cannot be any Iman is that one who believes in Allah and he believes in the judgment of Allah on the last day. And in, in, in at many places in Quran, we have seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that people violate the law. They commit excesses uh, because they don't believe in the judgment. They don't believe in the last judgment. In our interrelationships, for example, relationship between two persons within the family, be, be, between parents and the children, between husband and wife, if we believe that whatever I do, in spite of the, the behavior of this other party, I will get my uh, account and he will or he or she will get his own account and the, we will be judged on the basis of that account and we are being recorded, we are being watched and there will be a judgment. Nobody will dare commit a crime or violate a law or misbehave. So he is telling them a very important aspect of the belief in the monotheism and in theology that besides believing Allah, it is very important ingredient. Uh, it is the essential ingredient without which Iman is not complete and cannot be. That is that you have to believe in the last day. After making these three, two points, he is proceeding very systematically. Now, he is giving a little more introduction, not only to himself, but to the belief. At that time, the belief was being preached, the monotheism was being preached, particularly monotheism. There were many other beliefs. There was polytheism. But here he is referring to the belief which Ibrahim was preaching. After completing Surah, ar uh, uh, Yusuf, I have said that we'll inshallah take up Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam is the history of revelation 
for us in the recorded history of revelation the recorded history of revelation is start with ibrahim alayhi salam so he is referring to the deen which was coming up and the message which ibrahim alayhi salam was de- delivering so people at that time knew this by the name by the person who was delivering the message so he is telling them that this is authentic whatever i am telling you it has a lineage it has a continuity is nothing new from my side i am not telling you something new but i am continuing with the same thread and i am picking up the thread from ibrahim alayhi salam from whom it came to isaac alayhi salam and from it came to yaqub alayhi salam and now i am telling you in the same sequence that you don't uh, associate any god in your obedience in your submission every act we do is ibadat when we pass a life according to the rules the laws which have been enunciated it is ibadat and then yusuf alayhi salam is telling them that it is because of the blessings favors of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have our family our forefathers my forefathers have adopted this line and he, after giving this introduction after authenticating it after establishing the bond of relationship with the inmates he is addressing them in second person and he is gradually proceeding he is not starting immediately saying that forget about the food and then he starts talking about monotheism he is proceeding step by step and it is uh, uh, in a sequence with wisdom this is the translation now the, whatever i have said in this about uh, the message which he was authenticating by giving the stamp of the family war banner on the basis of revelation was raised by the earlier prophets in the environments of uh, ignorance and illiteracy this was the environment there was ignorance there was illiteracy and it was in that environment that the prophets had started preaching now prophets uh, mostly were supported by their families and friends you will find ahle bayt in the qisas of ibrahim alayhi salam you find a reference to saira ahle bayt wife that she was standing by the door you find the reference to al al imran you find the reference to brothers Harun, you find the reference to the friends, to the limited number of people around them, and mostly the family, mostly the tribe. That is why, at that time, that was the initial period, beginning. He was Abu Yusuf Al Salam is using a methodology, starting with the introduction. to the people who are uh, with whom this was being popularized it was becoming popular till it came to be known far and wide till it, uh, at the time of ibrahim alayhi salam isaac alayhi salam yaqub alayhi salam even yusuf alayhi salam it was very limited there were no mass commun- there was no mass communication there was no media therefore the religion particularly monotheism was naturally identified in those times in those days with the names of those prophets you will see when pharaoh submits and he wants to uh, commit toba he says now i believe in the lord of moses lord of harun they they refer to monotheism even to monotheism or to this message as the message from a particular prophet and they refer to the lord for which that prophet is preaching as his lord so here this is the wisdom of the time time frame in which yusuf alayhi salam was preaching that he is giving introduction authentication and he is giving the continuity that how it is proceeding in that background he is telling them as i said that he had established the bond of relationship with them 
Ya sahibi sicin. Oh my inmates of the prison. Oh my brothers of the prison. Oh my companions of the prison. Oh my comrades of the prison. He is not differentiating himself that since I belong to the lineage of the prophets, Ibrahim, Isaac, Yaqub, or I've come from the house of Aziz here. He is not establishing and he is not boasting that I'm giving you anything from my side. He is first of all, he is establishing a very strong bond of relationship with them. Oh my my comrades, he is telling them. There's another sequence that with what sequence he is I mean, moving. Immediately he is not coming to the dream. He is now giving them, explaining them the background, the ethos, the legal ethos, the situation through which Egypt was passing at that time. It was because of the conflict of power at that time. I'll show one or two slides on that also, that why there was a conflict of power. There was no hit of law. There was no equality before law. There was no due process of law. Everybody who had whatever power he had, he took the law in his own hands. Zulekha took the law in his hand, in, in her hands. Immediately before the proceedings could take place, even the initial one when she is talking to Aziz in the home, at the door, when he met both of them, she is telling him that he should go to jail. And he should be given a painful punishment. This is this shows that anybody who has a power, who had a power, he could take the law in his own hands. He could issue his own uh, orders. And this is what happened that during the second trial, which was against the group of women, at that time it was against the group of women, but they were not even investigated. The men who were in then are also, in fact, the affectees, the interested parties, they are taking a, making a judgment that although there is no evidence, this time there is no evidence, no shahada, but on the basis of the science, just the corroboration, he is giving them, they are giving Yusuf salam the punishment of life imprisonment. So there are lots, lots of power. There is there uh, anybody who has the, the uh, interest in it, he can take the law and he fears the power, he can take the law in his own hands. So he is telling them, you are in jail and they know that and, and at the bigger level, at the higher level, it is because of the political instability. This happens in the countries, it, this happens in the societies where there is instability, where there is power clash, where there are war lords. There is no authority, there is no writ of law. Without writ of law, there cannot be due process of law. And without due process of law, process of law, process of law there can the equality before law cannot be ensured. So all these things are missing because of the instability. Now he is telling them that this, this he is giving the political interpretation that it is go, it goes to the top. It is here that you need the stability. He said, Arbab mutafarikun khair, or Allah wahidul kahar. From this worldly experience, from this worldly example, you can understand that if there are more lords who have conflicting interests, who are fighting among themselves, in another ayat also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clearly that if there were more lords in the heavens, they would always fight for their power, for their influence, for their territory. So here he is pointing out that Arba, he is using the word Arba, not Rab. He is using the Arba of this planet, of this territory, of that city, of that country. That the, uh, the people who wield authority, power, if they are more in numbers, is it a good administration or the administration in which there is one? Why? Kahar. Kahar means who irresistibly can implement his orders. Irresistible. Who is irres irresistible in his management, in his administration. So he is asking them that in such a situation, one Lord who is one irresistible, who can implement his orders is better or 
the people, the warlords, uh, who have their own uh, conflict of interest and they implement their orders as it has been done in my case, as it has been done in your case, as it has been in his case. And this is the situation that we are here. And then in spite of that, he tells them what is the way to come out of that. He is giving them the political philosophy, the social philosophy that don't obey these multiple or multiplicity of lords. These are only names. They are not eternal. They are not they are not Wahid al Kahar. They are not irresistible. You can defeat them. You can defeat these however superior or super they seem to you. Don't obey them. Obey the law. Obey the moral. Obey what is, has been ordained to you in your nature. The Lord of the nature, he has made you. And then he is proceeding further and coming directly that we have been ordered, we have been ordained, we have been guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't obey these warlords, these fighting lords who are making us fight, who are uh, committing injustice against us, but we obey the Lord who has given us the moral law of interdependence, of uh, uh, cooperation, of sharing, of caring, of compassion. And then he tells them that this is the deen, this is the law, this is the deen. Other definitions, people give a lot of definitions of, of deen. As the society progresses, you will find that when this revelation has progressed, when it has come to the stage of Ibrahim when, when he is delivering a message on the basis of a revelation, or and uh, till the last prophet, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the mercy of the world, he is delivering the message, he is giving a more specific defin definition of uh, deen. This is one aspect. But here he is giving just the initial at that time. These things, the ritual and other things were yet to be established there. He was talking to those people who didn't know about it. They were totally new to this. He is not talking to them about Rosa, about Song, about Salah, about Zakat. He is talking to them the basic thing. That first of all, you come to believe that there is one Lord and he is irresistible. He has given the law. The law which he has given is the law of nature, which has compassion, which, which has remedy for all these things from which we are suffering. That is why I'm using the word compassion. And that is the deen. Very simple definition at that time. He is not starting with Swamo Salah. He's starting with a very simple thing. He's talking to them who are not Muslims, who are not yet accepted. History of ancient Egypt. Why word Arbab has been used? History of ancient Egypt is a series of stable and also comparatively instable intermediary, intermediate periods. One problem with the ancient Egyptian history is that we don't have a sequence. We don't have a periodization of history. In fact, the concept of periodization, exact periodization as a, a technical term has started, by, uh, started in Europe, but we are talking of the ancient Egypt. At that time, there was no sequencing. With every dynasty, it was not only the date of that dynasty started, but a new calendar started. That is why we have a problem in understanding the ancient history. Now, at that time, whatever the, uh, the uh, historical uh, material uh, available, it has been uh, periodized in broad categories like old period, middle period, and new kingdoms. New kingdoms, when we refer to the period of new kingdoms, it is the period of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. Till then, 
it was instable after the when he took over power he made the reforms the stability started egypt reached the pinnacle of its power in new kingdom after which it entered a period of slow decline pharaohs were had were at the pinnacle of power they came the, the pharaohs who reached the pinnacle of power it was after yusuf al islam and the foundation was laid and that is the period of moses al islam musa al islam the yusuf al islam laid the foundation after egypt's central government collapsed there were at arbab mutafarriqun there was no wahid al kaha collapsed at the end of old kingdom regional governors could not rely on king in the crisis food there were food shortages was these two people in the dreams in the interpretation of do uh, of these two persons is in the invisible and in the dream what their king is saying food shortages and civil wars it is in this background the social background the political background the current prevailing situation in which yusuf alaihi salam is making his speech it is 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 a speech so what is the lesson the lesson is whenever you talk whenever you preach when where you convey the message convey in the prevailing situation and he is giving a simple formula he is not is going for so much salat is going for deen ul qayyim and what is that in very brief terms and he is asking them about arbab ul mutafarriqun the situation local rulers were competing for territorial control and political power and because of this they were committing atrocities on their people to keep them under thumb they were committing atrocities on their own people there are details available in the history kings of the middle kingdom now middle kingdom kingdom is going to end by about the end of 17th century 1690 bc and that is the period of yusuf al salam he takes over he restored the country's stability and prosperity Yusuf alayhi salam came before Musa alayhi salam about 220 years before him and this is the period Yusuf alayhi Musa alayhi salam's period is about uh, 1500 and he is in 1600 something Yusuf alayhi salam so when we study Quran we have to understand its context and we have to try to understand this is just a, 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 a an effort you conduct your own research you come up with your own opinion you form your own opinion but the point is that when there is a statement about science as in surah ar-rahman we went in details into uh, some some what not all some what detail in uh, so science here we are talking of history allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us history otherwise why he should tell us what is the wisdom in every word in quran there is a wisdom he is addressing the ya uh, ya sahib is sajna now they are also in developing association with him they are also talking to him they are also showing the bond here yusuf alayhi salam has established the bond or two companions of a prison he is addressing them directly in second person as i said and now he has come to the stage where he is going to give them the interpretation step by step he has come to this point or two companions of the prison as far one of you he will give drink to his master the word used is saki that you will become a saki you wish to use the word in urdu also that who serves the wine the bartender he will become a person who will serve wine to the master he will become a saki and to the other he is telling him that you will be crucified he is telling them that judgment in both of your cases will be different they were under trial they had been put into jail along with yusuf alaihi salam 
and he's telling them that you are facing trial, there will be different judgments. And then he's, I'll, I'll go a little bit more in this judgment. He's telling them that I am giving you tastafiyam, the judgment which you are, the interpretation which you are asking me, I am giving you the legal interpretation, fatayil, fatwa. Fatwa means legal interpretation. Legal interpretation. I am giving you the legal interpretation. He is making it clear that I am not telling you just on the basis of the dream. Tawil of the, uh, of the, of the uh, dream. But I am giving you the legal interpretation because he must have talked to them. They must have talked to them. They talked to him. They must have opened up. He has established a bond with them and he knows their case. And he is a wise person, he is a knowledgeable person, and wherever he has lived, he has lived to understand the environs. When he has come to the jail, he must have studied the system of jail. He must have gone through the legal system. He has already faced two trials. He is giving them fatwa, yes, tafitiyan, and giving you the legal interpretation which you are seeking from me. The other will be crucified and the birds will eat from his head. The matter has been decreed. Now it has been defied, decided about which you both inquire. Here, most probably, he is not talking only on the basis of uh, the interpretation of the dream. He is also talking about the legal provisions, the procedures and the way the trial has taken place. He is going, he is telling them that this will be the legal outcome. And since they have been sent to jail, not uh, 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 set free on bail, they are going to be punished, it means. But in one case, he feels that he will be released. He must have studied that case also. And the other, he, they must have told him, given him the details. And the other person also must have given the details. Now here, there is one thing more important about the dreams, the science of dreams. It is not just a hodgepodge thing. It is a science. Particularly after fright, it has been organized. There are more details available, more depth available to the study of this science. What this interpretation shows is that people see the dream in their social environments in their experiences through which they are passing. This is one layer. When the conscious is sleeping, subconscious is awake, and then the things from the memory are retrieved. They come up and they float with the source subconscious. At that time, the background canvas is that the film is going on in the social or the environmental uh, background and the canvas it is going on. So one is the social or political or the environmental background. Number two, the scientific science shows that it is person's own physical state. Whether he is hungry, they are hungry, they are under stress. The person who is more hungry is seeing something about eating, eating from his head. That shows the a worrisome state of his affairs through the trial through which he, has, he is passing the case which he is facing and for which the punishment is crucifixion and his subconscious is fearing the death that the penalty is not only death but it is crucifixion so this dream has scientific aspects it has scientific background it has to be understood it has to be studied but in the, these studies we have never carried out in this background. We have learned it from others. Freud has given these theories. And then these uh, uh, dreams in these two backgrounds, one is the, so the social or the environmental background and then the physical, internal and the condition of the body, what one has uh, eaten, how uh, he is feeling about his uh, internal uh, and external uh, physical situation of the body and then 
is overall relationship overall relationship with the problem which one is facing which is riding the mind which has taken control of the mind one will see the dreams under that influence so there are other aspects also and not going now into these details but yusuf alay salam is giving them the interpretation taking into consideration all these scientific facts which allah subhanahu wa taala has told him has given him the ilm word ilm has been used allah has taught him allah he has taught him this is ilm and on the basis of the ilm which allah has given him he is giving the tawil where tawil is required and he is giving fatwa where legal interpretation is required to the king he will give the tawil that those ayat will come afterwards but to these two persons in the jail inmates he is giving them the legal ruling now these are the ayat where word fatwa has been used yuftikum yuftikum uh, and then here iftuni give a ruling give a ruling ruling legal interpretation ruling means legal interpretation legal interpret these are the words used in quran yastaftunak yastaftunak egyptians executed people by impaling a pointed stick and the quran tells us that a pharaoh a pharaoh pharaoh was the lord of his stakes through the they were impaled through the victim when he was impaled he was uh, hung uh, against the wall or uh, against any stake centuries later the romans executed people by fastening the victim to a cross they made this change um, egyptians used the same thing but then the romans slightly modified it that they placed it on a cross that is why we see the cross of uh, uh, jesus on a cross with ropes or nails and they call this crucifixion so one person was going to be crucified and then it also shows the disrespect for the human being and disrespect for the body of the human being that the bodies were thrown away to the birds to the vultures to the wildlife and this is what yusuf alay salam is telling that when that person will die on the cruci- uh, due to crucifixion he will be crucified his dead body will be thrown and the birds will eat from his head from his body this is the interpretation in the background of the laws prevailing at the time the legal system the social system the political system we have to understand when quran is talking of history we have to understand through history when it is talking about when it talking when it is talking about science we have to understand it through science and he is talking about amr um, that it has been decided it has been judgment has been made almost the judgment has been made in the case of yusuf alay salam how the judgment was made to the al amr it has been judged it has been decided or some people will interpret that it was it has been decided by allah yes everything is decided by allah but he is here giving a scientific interpretation and a legal interpretation and he is telling them that the situation appears the way they have put confined you in the death cell shows that matter has been decided and you are going to be crucified as for the mention of crucifixion in the time of moses when the pharaohs magicians believed in the message of moses the pharaoh threatened them by saying that i will use the sticks i will crucify you this was the uh, the practice at the time of uh, uh, yusuf alay salam during the period yusuf alay salam lived in egypt and he made the reforms because he saw these things and in the contemporary mesopotamia i have shown you in some other lecture that this law of crucifixion and impalement and stakes was available under the hammurabi law so that was the law of the time and that was changed afterwards 
that had to be changed. Now, these are the ayah which refer to these stakes and crucifixion by the Pharaoh, which he is, uh, uh, with which he is frightening his uh, people. I uh, stop here. We will be now entering into the next uh, phase of this episode. In the discussion of Surah Ar Rahman, I am going episode by episode and I stop here. Next time, inshallah, we'll take up this because I have already covered uh, more than uh, 45 minutes. So I stop here. Subhan Rabbik Rabbil Izzat Amma Yassifuna Salaamu Nalal Musaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man ahtayt wa tawalana fi man tawalayt wa barik Allahumma lana fi ma aatayt wa qina wa sif anna sharra ma qadayt fa innaka ya rabbana taqdi bilhaq wa la yuhda alayk Allahumma adkhilna birahmatika fi ibadika salihin Allahumma akhrijna min zulmati al-jahri wa al-wahmi ilan wa al-ilm Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bimma alamtana wa zidna ilma Allahumma ajalna mimman yastam'una al-qawla fa yattabi'una ahsana اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرام وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وفضلك عن من سواك اللهم بفضلك برحمه بفضلك اللهم بفضلك ورحمتك عليك الحق والدين اللهم انصر الاسلام وعز المسلمين يا اكرم الاكرمين او الله spread your mercy upon us shower us with your blessings increase our knowledge grant us forgiveness and reward us with the glory of the prophets in the firdaus al-a'la او الله forgive our parents and all our friends and relatives who have passed away او الله grant them your mercy, make their graves a garden from heaven and grant them the firdaus al-a'la. O oh Allah, remedy our son Maharaj and all our friends and relatives who are sick. O oh Allah, grant them full and speed recovery. O oh Allah, guide our children, protect them and make them righteous. O oh Allah, we ask you every name you have collected for yourself, that none of us leave this gathering, but his pains have been relieved. His worries have been removed, his debts have been paid, his weaknesses have been concealed, his sins have been forgiven, and his needs have been fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adad khalqid wa rida nafsi wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adad khalqid wa rida nafsi wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adad khalqid wa rida nafsi wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati. Wal asr, inna al-insana la fi khusr, illa al-ladhina amanu amanu al-salihat, wa tawasab bil-haq, wa tawasab bil-sabr. وآخر الدعوات الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام السلام على خير المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله